bulk. And let me drag him in. One second. Uh... All right, Bulk, you're on the air. Yeah, hello. Is this working? Yes, yes, it's working just fine. Luck, luckily, with uh, Discord Hangouts, there's not the uh, problem with the phones. Yeah. I just want to kind of just give a little, a little ramble of ideas I had just since I kind of popped in on Dave and they kind of talked about like YouTube and all that. Well, mostly around like how things changed from 2016 to now. Mm -hmm. Go right ahead. Uh, whatever. Like I, like I said, this is the after show. So whatever you want to talk about, we'll fucking talk about. You got petty beef with someone. This is the place for it. Uh -huh. No, 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 it's not that. Uh, just more of kind of like, I have no idea how to st how to like start off my like my own channel and whatnot. Oh, okay. Because, yeah. So, the best thing. So, like, what topic specifically? Are you going to be a commentary podcast? You're going to be gaming. You're going to be wrestling. What are you looking to do? Uh, uh that's the biggest question because. But I, but I kind of like somewhat filtered out, and I just I know myself to not be someone who can do commentary, like uh, like just the format and all that. The whole like I don't even know what to start it because like my own channel itself is just currently just posting like sound bits of eight bit music I put on a, some sort of music generator online. Okay. And I kind of want to expand a bit more, You kind of like either do like morning live streams, kind of like a morning show of somewhat. You know but what? It's, yeah. uh, if, I, if I can cut you off there, morning live yeah. streams are actually might not be a bad way to go, especially if you do it on uh, Twitch. Because the thing is, um, and there, there, there have been studies to show this, people look for content like that around the morning time. Like, I don't know what time you get up, but like specifically like 7 to like 10, people are looking for that type of live streaming content. So if you're able to do a morning show with um, some, catchy vi um, some catchy music, some nice visuals, and topics to hook in your viewers, you might be able to get something there. So you said you won't be able to do commentary type stuff specifically, but yeah. uh, are you interested in the gaming landscape at all? You could be like a tech report guy, you know, like um, like new piece of technology coming out, um, new graphics card, new game coming out. Yo, uh, they just did an update for such and such game you could report on that you know uh tipsters going in that direction with his more variety focused streams that could be something for you yeah no i understand that uh, i've been watching tipster as well for a while and i i do enjoy his con i do enjoy his content the layout it's just more of like i kind of want to stay uh, stay away from certain things like that in case like even though the way he does it is like he's using a source I apologize for any background noise. Oh, you're uh, fine. I like he has the sources. He has the sources up. He kind of like he just kind of like explains it in in his interpretation or what, or just try to give a quick summary and whatnot of the article. But for me, it's I want to try and be kind of someone who just like does something related to morning gaming, like maybe a casual um, nine thirty game stream where it's just like playing runescape or something just for like it's just a a relax a relaxed start to the day and then not sure because at the moment i only have like 9 30 to 1 in the afternoon and mm -hmm. that's a lot of open space and just the idea for me is to try to find a way to make it some at least at, for a good start 
have a decent type of content up there or like something just to like kind of give it a bit of a kickstart. All right. So the important thing you need to know is before you can have a hundred viewers consistently, you're going to have zero viewers consistently. That's always the, um, the sad part, you know, but you got to make sure you keep up the energy when it comes to your live streams, always act like the room is bigger than it is. If that makes any sense, because you like when it comes to live stream, always got to be entertaining on point. Make sure there's as little dead air as possible. So admittedly for me, you know what I do uh, when I'm doing like a more chilled stream that doesn't have any topics to it. What I try to do is I, ha I have friends call in so that way we can just have like a casual conversation. So like, for example, I was doing a casual gaming stream one night and my friend called in and we talked about for an hour just about dragon ball you know I d and i don't know uh what shows you're into or anything like that but if you get a friend to call in and just like shoot the shit it doesn't even necessarily have to be drama topics or anything like that if you can just have someone call in and like have a really good casual conversation something that you can bounce off back and forth that does really good and um i don't know uh, if you have any equipment right now for it or not but uh Sorry, go on. Oh, but there's nothing wrong with having um, a basic setup. Uh, I don't know what kind of phone you have, but depending on whether or not you have a decent Wi-Fi connection, there's actually an app you can download on both your PC and your, your phone that you can use your phone as a webcam. So that saves you around 100 bucks right there. And then we also have microphones that are that sound fairly decent around like fifty dollars you know so that way you don't have to break the bank with um starting up your stream because obviously you see these streamers with like 500 to a thousand dollar um microphones and then they have like the really expensive dslr webcam setup and i think people have a lot of misconception that that's what you need to start your live streams with not not at all yeah, no, I I understand that completely. Um, not just not just from kind of like what you're uh, explaining, but just the reason I kind of wanted to start um content creation or just like streaming in general was because of kind of like um like the whole VTuber genre and whatnot because it was it's that kind of thing where you have this kind of avatar that can that's a kind of character you play as. And you can also just kind of like hide your face while still kind of like letting loose a bit, being yourself, whatnot. Yeah, um, yeah, and and of course, like depending, because like, um, depending on the type of creator you are, uh, sometimes people like create like pure characters with that, and they have fun playing the character. Uh, I don't know if like a VTuber route's necessarily um, the way you want to go, because uh, admittedly. Uh, not of course. This doesn't go for all the fan base, but a lot of them are kind of degenerates. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's like that. That was also another thing I kind of like wanted to do. I wanted to be someone that goes a little bit against the grain, like mm -hmm. not so far, to, not so far to have my own like like my own kind of routes to say, but in a way that kind like kind of has people not be too degenerate, but um. Yeah how to explain it kind of like if like whenever someone kind of oh you're breaking up you're breaking vtubers like <clears throat> to me there's always two s oh, sorry uh sorry no, uh, you're... is is it still breaking up no you're good now uh, you're good now all right sorry the, um just the bar went red um anyways like whenever i whenever like i talk to someone who who knows vtubers they either think some something kind of like uh, corporate or indie and they always assume kind of one is professional one is degenerate and I just kind of like want to be something that's in between where it's it's something that kind of I don't know kind of feels like real meets real someone who just wants to like kind of like express themselves but also kind of like keep the keep the distance from viewer to to streamer be a bit equal to see hey i'm here i'm just i'm just someone who just wants to mess around and i'm putting this effort into it yeah i well it's like like the main thing with streaming is sort of that viewer slash streamer connection right but we see oftentimes where 
the line between uh streamer and viewer kind of gets blurred and it creates like that like parasocial relationship that we see in a lot of like minecraft youtubers for example so yeah mm -hmm. like definitely like treat treat your audience well but always make sure that they know it's purely from that perspective you know um yeah and i think i think the important thing is um make sure you have a consistent schedule when it comes to streaming like that uh especially if you want to do more morning stuff uh of course when it comes to morning let's admit it you know we all don't want to wake up at the crack of dawn sometimes you know even if we train ourselves to so maybe occasionally you'll miss your schedule but if you can make it consistent and the viewers know what they're getting from you i think you'll have no problem yeah <laughs> for me yes i'm not gonna wake up crack of dawn like you said it's just gonna be kind of just an, an average maybe just some i just want to kind of like be something that's like a filler to someone's day you know something they just listen to they don't need really need to like interact it's just like something they they just tune in listen hear someone talk whatnot and and for me it's kind of like i want to i don't know how to say this but i want to kind of like be as social as i can while still while not like being going too far out because if i just kind of like push myself to be a bit more like positive or a bit more upbeat it kind of like takes the it kind of like takes a personal toll of and like kind of annoys myself with it just trying to like you know gas myself up mm -hmm. yeah well i think if you stick to that you'll do perfectly fine is there anything else you wanted to talk about yeah just um <laughs> No, nothing related to this, but just um, a personal, personal, not personal. Um, just the kind of the thing that kind of like has been gnawing on me whenever, like, I kind of thought about just YouTube in general, mm -hmm. when like even or just content creation in general, because it's like I kind of saw everything in all, almost in the negative side of things, kind of like. Um, Kind of like the thing with uh, that Twitch streamer that got unbanned after making that comment, and things like YouTube removing dislikes and these types of YouTubers I used to look up to, kind of like doing these bad things, and it like it just kind of gets to me easily because it's like the the ideas they had, everything they I was inspired and I want to do something that each of them had kind of like given me the, um, the spark to do but after seeing what happened afterwards in their career on youtube or just in general it just like it just kind of like pushes me away from wanting to get, go out there mm -hmm. if if you know yeah yeah like this is how i look at it, right youtube <clears throat> always has been and always will be a shitty platform same with same with twitch they got their problems but it's where we can express ourselves creatively to a certain extent. And the thing, the thing you always got to do with that is just have fun while you can. If you get banned down the road, we all well, you'll solve it then. <laughs> but but till then, you got to have fun with it. You got, you got get the banned stuff out of your mind. Now, don't be dropping the end bomb every five seconds you know most people maybe maybe from the aug or rfc side of things will call you based for it but uh mama susan's gonna look at you weird for it but you get what i'm saying just yeah, no. just just have fun if you get fucking banned for whatever shit you do down the road deal with it then just keep like be be yourself and just have fun with it thanks for the call in bulk any last words no, not nothing else other than just like, uh, just a slight ramble. Just I've been having nostalgia trips, just looking at like people just talking about Hot Wheel cars and Speed Racer, and it's it's just giving me a lot of nostalgia. That's oh, just, yeah. that's just it. Yeah, I get it. Well, thank thank mm -hmm. you for calling in. Mm -hmm. thank you. Oh, oh, I cut, I cut, I cut a lot before he said. Oh my god. Oh, hoo -hoo. I feel bad for that. <laughs> Oops. <laughs>
Well, anyway, guys, if you have any opinions whatsoever, if you have controversial stuff you want to talk about, you want to debate about, you want to talk shit about another creator, you want to talk about shit, you want shit about tipster you want to talk shit about da dead arm dave come join the server we'll talk about it we'll clip it we'll make money off you we'll be perfectly fine but yeah don't worry i didn't start this uh after show without any topics trust trust me so i'm sure some of you are aware of the creator repsion right well, the motherfucker has one of the craziest exes possible. Like, just like this is like, she's like the super villain to like some weird college sex comedy you would see in like the early 2000s. I shit you fucking not. And she went to court with his new girlfriend because she accused this new girlfriend of quote-unquote stalking her dude as soon as the judge fucking as soon as the judge saw the shit she was saying she was like nah nah -uh. like this case is being thrown out because she was legit trying to use tweets as like some sort of gotcha against uh jane that had no sort of correlate mind if i uh chill in the server no talk uh mind if i chill in the shirt sir join join the dead on dave server join the server if you want dude. um it's open to the public if anyone wants to join go right ahead and if you change your mind you want to call in that's perfectly fine as well the Dead on Dave server is active again the copious king is rising we need you in the Royal Army. <laughs> I don't know. Can I get more cringe than that? Can, can I get more cringe? I don't know. But yeah. And if you guys didn't see it or not, Quantum TV, a uh, topic that was used on a previous um, Willie Mac stream with Dave, is back at it again. And my God, the copium from this dude. The copium. This is why it's perfect for the co copious uh, after show. This man is insane. Let me tell you. He's trying to call this mixed girl a fucking half-breed. I, I shit you not. He's calling her a half-breed. Um, he, he talked about how he hopes that, like, all... He wishes death on all gay people. And he, he's just so easy to clown on because half of his professional videos are, or like half the videos he's done in response to all the drama is done on his shitty phone. And let me tell you, this man's supposed to be a tech YouTuber, like full on tech, excuse me, he's supposed to be a full on tech YouTuber and he's not, he's not able to do half the stuff a tech YouTuber does. And it, it, it's so hilarious. It really is. And I don't know if you guys uh, saw it or not, but fucking Doc on the radio and Colton, Colton got into a, a legit, like, no, well, not legit, but they got into a quote-unquote boxing match. And it was hilarious. Uh, Colton had no idea what he was doing. He was legit just flailing his arms. In fact, if you want to see that, uh, Dave was co-hosting for shot from the point on that day and oh my god it 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 was hilarious it, it legitimately was and to give my perspective on the willy uh not the willy mac the um the boogie situation the thing with that is ethan was kind of calling that as like fence sitting now it's definitely like a backhanded thing I watched your video on it. It was situation. How you doing, nerdy? I am doing good, be hearted. Hey, be hearted. If you want to call in, talk shit about any sort of drama situation, you want to talk about some fucking Spurg drama in the RFC community, you come to the After Copia show. 
if you, you see you see it in my pinned comment, there is a link to the Dead on Dave Discord server. And if you want to talk shit about anyone in the community, you want to talk shit about Taps, you want to talk shit about Mike the Bike, come on in. But yeah, this is... Oh, the internet has been kind of slow for the past couple of days, but when you get like a hilarious story, it is fucking hilarious. Let me tell you guys, there was a YouTuber who goes by the name of Drama Investigator who released a video called The Many Faces of Moses. And it is like, it is pure T-channel bullshit. Oh my god. So... I'm going to share with it on the YouTube end. But like I said, guys, you want to talk about any petty shit whatsoever. Come to the, come to the After Copia show. Oh, let's see. Drama investigator. Yep, here we go. <laughs> oh, and... Uh, and here we go. Let me uh, let me get it pulled up on screen for you folks. Yeah. So if we look at this channel's content, let's see. Ethan Klein defended Trisha Paytas for this. Gabby Hanna must be stopped. Breaking down David Dobrik's NFT rug pull. Nate Fuentes is furious at Jeffree Star. The dark truth about Jada Smith's manipulation. <laughs> oh, we got some juicy, ju like some gold mine here. We got some gold here, folks. It, it, it is. It's wonderful. But yeah, they made a video called uh, nine days ago, The Many Faces of Moses. Because remember, guys, Moses is a manipulator. He's the most evil man imaginable. Now, let's completely talk shit about this video. But fucking no. There are many faces of Moses Heckmon, Trisha Paytas' husband, but there are also many faces to Trisha Paytas, as we all know. But if there are many faces to these people, but did you know that the people they also interact with have many faces. As we review past content before Moses was exposed for who he really was, we can analyze these prior videos that predicted his downfall. <laughs> oh, oh, by the way, um, the controversy that uh, Moses got into was never proven right. It's just, oh, the person said so, so it must be true that no one saw coming. The term two-faced does not apply to this married couple. Oh, no, 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 no. They have many faces, and that is... Well, yeah, no, there's no doubt in my mind that Trisha's two-faced, but Moses is just living his best life, dude. I mean, come on. Why they're so good for each other. Match made in heaven? More like a match made in hell. Now, the only difference between... Tr oh, what a banger that was. Oh, fucking got him, drama investigator. Trisha and Moses is that Trisha is screwed up, but at least everyone can see it and she doesn't hide it. Whereas Moses is always hiding his true colors. And like, I don't know. Moses is the true evil villain. If you've noticed, but when he was getting exposed, he wasn't online crying into the camera like Trisha was. He was hiding away behind the scenes. And then when the backlash eventually subsided, he slowly came back onto Trisha's social media. And he almost kind of Truly shifted as a evil. person and changed Truly. the way he displayed himself online. Frenemies was the beginning and the end of Trisha's career, earning almost half a million per episode. What did she have to lose? That 5% perhaps? Well, now she's lost 90% of her career thanks to her bachelor Tinder swindler husband. Husband. So today, oh, you can't blame that all on Moses. Trisha's just an idiot. I, 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 I'm pretty sure in her ten plus years of being an online figure, it's safe to say that's mostly her fault. 
Today we're going to break down some old videos of Trisha and Moses, including their first video ever on Trisha's channel, because there's a lot that we missed. And OMG, I just looked back now and it kind of makes sense as to why everything panned out the way it did. We missed so much, it's not even funny, but it's okay because we're going to break everything down and analyze it. So firstly, we need to give a bit of context for some of those out there who don't really know what happened and why he but we need to get a bit of a context so that we Got don't know canceled. what happened. So let's briefly touch on that. Moses' ex-girlfriend Daphne had come forward and exposed him late last year for allegedly stuffing her. Daphne allegedly, by the way, allegedly, and look, here's the thing with stealthing, stealthing. You can't prove stealthing unless you have like a text from them, one hundred percent admitting that the stealth ain't happened right or you know there's a fucking kid you know unless one of those two things happen you can't prove stealth ain't. i'm sorry you can't he had exposed everything on her instagram story and it was all downhill for moses and trisha from there more and more evidence started coming to light from both trisha and moses's past and yeah trisha got cancelled because she was always a firm believer of believing the victim first that was until her she was never a firm believer in that it was believe me always believe me that was trisha's whole thing or believe the person who's being who, believe the person who's making the accusations because the person that they're making the accusations against i have like some weird vendetta with right that was always trisha's thing own fiance at the time was being accused. So now let's rewind a little and take a look at the many faces Moses has from the beginning to present. The first time Moses was ever mentioned to Trisha was by Ethan Klein himself, who probably regrets his decision to this day. He would apply to be on my bachelor. He was supposed it. to. I don't it know what happened. happened. He I said that he wanted to apply. So I found his Instagram. Fine. I still. Uh, last video still gonna be playing. I don't he know said he wanted to. I think he's he's honestly super busy. He's like a fucking mega. Uh, hard work. He's like a. He should make time though, right? He should make, he time. make time. He looked so hot. I was like low key impressed. I was like, holy shit. Let, we'll make he like he, he's like strikingly hot. Okay, we'll make sure he gets in. We'll take a last minute. Is he from Israel? Mm hmm. But he lives here. In LA. Super successful. Long hair. I love it. I looped him up. You get a chance to fuck <laughs> Jesus. That's what he looked like. Oh, and he's Jewish. He's. Yeah. Oh. Okay, we'll make sure we get there. Ah, he's so hot. <laughs> if not, we can just also hook up. We don't have to date. Oh my god, if your brother <laughs> fucked <laughs> Woo! That'd be fun. I don't think. Oh my Let's god. Let's not have him as a contestant. Let's just meet. No, no, no. Ooh, that would be fun. No, no, oh it's like my a god. Same yeah, it doesn't matter. Uh, I forgot us. how annoying can, Trisha was just, just in general. <laughs> you know? He's gonna tell you? I don't think so. Yeah, he will. Ooh, I love that. No, I really all right. love that. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> so, so we have six strong contestants, West, possibly seventh with Hila's brother. <laughs> We're gonna get a last minute. That look on Hila's face, it was like so uncomfortable. But it's also interesting the way in which Ethan described Hila's brother, like making him out to be this super successful person with a lot going for him. And in reality, something viewers found out later on down the line through leaked texts between Moses and his ex-girlfriend was that Moses was actually incredibly jealous of his sister Gila and Ethan like super super well, you can like he was in the LA area and he wasn't homeless and presumably wasn't living with nine other roommates I think that's a good caliber of success yeah he wasn't as successful as Ethan and Gila Ethan and Gila are huge online figures to this day, I mean, yeah, the relevancy has kind of dwindled, but you still remember the name of Ethan and Gila. At the end of the day, you still remember them, you know? The, the, and the thing is, you know what? If I had a family member that was successful online doing what they love, yeah, I would be kind of jealous. I, I wouldn't blame Moses jealous. So of course, without a doubt, that's probably the reason why he decided to date Trisha, because he knew it would piss them off. And there's- I don't think that was necessarily it. I think what had happened was he saw an opportunity to hook up with a chick and he took it. 
Simple as that. The saying that goes, narcissists will always befriend or be super friendly with people you don't like. And it's clear from the beginning, Ethan didn't like Trisha. Moses saw this, and we can see now that he took it upon himself to get super close to Trisha, knowing this would piss off his sister and brother-in-law. So it was in fact instant regret from the moment Trisha and Moses laid eyes on each other. Ethan knew that he and Healer had effed up by introducing Trisha to Moses because 15 days after that episode aired, Trisha and Moses were already dating and Ethan posted a video with Healer to their channel called Trisha Paytas Betrayed Me and Ruined Our Show. So it was like, I she betrayed me. She betrayed me by hooking up with my brother-in-law. She betrayed me. I really thought he was going to apply. I like him. Okay. So now I find out that they've been talking in the DMs on Instagram and that they've been well, actually, the real the real thing that shocked me, and first of all, I have to urge you all that I, me and Hila don't know anything about this. No. Nobody's telling us anything. Well, okay, so after the... Yeah, you know, it's almost like you don't necessarily need to talk about your relationships with family members, you know, initially. I know everyone's saying, oh, well, you know, the, Trisha, Trisha and Ethan have had problems in the past, so they need to talk about... Nah, fuck that shit. I, like... He, he, you know what? Moses doesn't need to talk about his family members. Who the fuck he's sleeping with? Like, that is a... I don't know if that's a hot take of you all, but that's what I think. He didn't need to t tell anyone shit who was he hooking up with. The last episode ended with her. Let me show this picture. My brother... Uh, he watches the show. We saw this on, on Twitter. Wait, wait. No, he told us that after the end of the show, he told us that they <coughs> spoke in the DM, right? He did say they that. They spoke... Yeah, they spoke in the DMs. I, I can't do the Gila voice like Tommy can, unfortunately. Yes. But then that was it. And we yeah. were like, okay, just, you know, you gotta tell us what's happening and we gotta, we can't have another one of those situations. Yeah. Another one of those situations. <laughs> that, that, that's a bit like, that's a bit odd. That, that, admittedly, that part's a bit odd. And like, he was like, "Yes, of course." Of course. Yeah. I'm guessing. I'm guessing. Like, it, like he's hooked up with a girl before and it caused trouble. But whatever. That's like family drama BS. I don't want to know about. He says. So that was our last update. That's oh. all. You can definitely tell that they were so uncomfortable with the situation, and they'd actually had an agreement with Trisha and Moses set in place where nothing would happen off camera. What Ethan pointed out <laughs> next will shock you. Trisha posted. Look at his face. What is he doing? Is it's like how dare how dare Moses smile for a picture, right, boys? How how fucking dare that monster? How dare he smile for the camera? He's he's like he's uh, goofing on us. Like look. Well, it's hard to tell. Cause nice place, by the way, for Trisha. Nice view. You can't tell. I don't Hollywood know. Hills. It by could the be way. just him smiling. Bro, what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> Cope harder. You, you know what's my Cope biggest harder. fear right now? Is that That's this what action I would becomes That's... serious because Trisha kept trying to come over to our house and babysit Theodore. <laughs> it's not happening. Is that she's going to end up finding a way to come over to our house because she's Moses' girlfriend. No. She's not allowed over. No. <laughs> yeah. And little did they know, Trisha would eventually become an aunt to Ethan and Healer's children and give birth to their first cousin. Yikes. But it's just interesting to note that from the beginning, Ethan had noticed one of most... Yeah, how, how dare... Um, don't... Oh, like... Trisha is like full on using that baby for views and it hasn't even like come out of her yet. She she is fully exploiting that thing for as many views as she possibly can. Um I dare say that her and Moses are probably going to start like some family vlog type stuff eventually when that baby is born. I pity the baby. Uh but you know what? They wanted to have a kid his faces the sneaky look he'd pointed out he was right on the money with that and that photo no he fucking wasn't that was just that was just him smiling for fuck's sake well these are these are what these t channels do they like micro analyze stuff and they think they're intelligent for doing it it's like no it's called reading too much in a situation
Looking back at it now, it looks like he definitely knew what he was getting up to. Like, oh yeah, I know this is gonna piss off my sister and her husband. So I'm just gonna say it before anyone else does, the lack of chemistry in their first vlog, well, all their vlogs actually, let's be honest, but their first vlog in particular was just so obvious. They were not a great... Yeah, well, I mean, it's almost like Moses is camera shy, you know? I mean, it's almost like he's not an online figure. Y you know, this is basically like, let's take someone, like, let's let's take Willie Mac, okay? Willie Mac. Let's say it's Willie Mac from him doing his first goddamn YouTube video. Whenever he started, right? Do you think that was... Any good, you think the Willie Mac of today would be putting out that kind of energy? You know, if you take any, any anybody who ever did their first YouTube video, it fucking sucks because they're nervous on camera, they don't know good timing. This is probably the experience with Moses. Motherfucker's probably not used to vlogs. So, to be, and especially like this mukbang sort of vlog type shit, Emperor John Kill 3D. You got me. You got my sub after the video you made on Quantum TV. Thank you, Emperor John Kill 3D. Hey, hang on, Emperor John Kill. If you look in the pin comment below, the, it, it is the it is the link to the Discord server I am hosting in. If you want to call call in, so that way. You, we can talk crap about Quantum TV. I fully, like, dude, like, c come on, come on, on, on live air. We can talk crap about Quantum TV if you want to. I, I fully, I fully support it because this is the copious after hours. We don't give a damn on here. We're just here for the lols, right? This is like the after hour show, but more based. But yes, if you want to call in, go to the Discord link below and join the Discord space, all right? Till then, let's continue on. Great match from the start. It's a very special moment of having Korean fried cheese with you. I don't bring anyone to just Korean fried cheese. This is like a special thing. I had no idea it was here then. Really? And you live in Korea? Oh, I lived here for eight years. And you never had Korean fried cheese? Mm -hmm. All your Korean girlfriends who never had Korean fried cheese. Just kidding. Um, okay, which one do you want to try? And you can see in Moses' face like he wasn't interested in eating corn dogs at all. But yeah, lack of chemistry. Oh my god, oh my god, this totally shows how evil Moses is. This totally. Um, hold on. Hold on. Okay. Oh, reload. Hold on. Oh, okay. I would enjoy coming on board currently. I'm not near my computer to get online, so I'm walking via the YouTube app. I'll join the Discord, though, trying to clean my PC. Oh, Emperor! Emperor John! You can call in on your phone. No problem, actually. With Discord Hangout, um, with, with Discord Hangout, you can join uh, the spaces. I can drag you in. And unlike uh, other shows, there is no Discord problem with it whatsoever. So if you still want to call it on phone, that's perfectly fine. We accept you. We accept the, the phone sure. users. Trisha's tone was definitely mono, kind of mirroring Moses' tone of voice. And one could argue that maybe he's just a quiet speaker. But no, there's definitely a lot more to that. Whenever Trisha's filmed with an ex-boyfriend like Jason, for example, the... Yeah. Jason she was always matched. Okay, from what I know, Jason was a I believe he was already a vlog YouTuber at that point. So he knew the energy and, and you know, drama investigator. This might come as a shock to you, but sometimes people have different types of personality. I know that's a shocker. I know, trust me, it is. It, it's very much a shocker. But sometimes people have different personality types. Well, she was having a go at him or being romantic towards him. They always had those sparks. But those sparks are non-existent with Moses. It's definitely an awkward couple to have to watch. All those texts Moses was sending about Trisha that were derogatory are definitely believable just because of the way he interacts with her. He definitely wasn't obsessed with her, not at all from the beginning. Oh, uh, you know, like I said, 
Probably, probably a bit nervous about a camera being pointed in his face, you know? Who knows? Now, Moses' persona at this point was extremely calm and relaxed. At this point in time, people were commenting about what a cool dude Moses seemed to be. Little did Trisha's fans know that this was just one of the many faces of and Moses. And guys, He's so make sure you tweet out the stream at me, at Dead on Dave, so that way we can spread the word about the copious after show. Calm and open, best quote ever. Not everything is about you. She could learn so much from him. So on the 13th of April, Trisha had said that her and Moses split up. Moses didn't want to see her for some reason, but that didn't last long because although Ethan and Hila begged Moses to not continue things with Trish, he went behind their backs and did anyway. Now fast forward to August the 4th of 2020. Moses appeared on Trisha's channel, again doing a mukbang. So somewhere in between March and August 2020, while Moses was seeing Trish, broke it off with her and got back with her etc he was also seeing Daphne at some point but was lying to her about where he was at romantically and relationship wise with Trisha and vice versa Trisha had no idea about Daphne so anyway on August the 4th Moses featured in yet another vlog of Trisha's now something Trisha said in this video really changed the way Moses saw Trisha from this point on like she presented him with an opportunity and his eyes oh my god they just lit up he was so excited with what she'd had to say his life definitely changed after this vlog he he was a lot more present in her videos and on Oh my god, guys, this totally proves 100% that Moses is evil. Will you do all this with me? Maybe. What? Wait, really? Is that a real maybe? If you did only with me, my whole life would be so much more simple. It would be so much easier. I wouldn't have to look for collabs. I wouldn't have to go get SD. I'm sorry, but... Just a pro tip to all my, my, my homies out there, my homeboys. If your girl asks you to do OnlyFans with her, maybe run for the hills. I don't know, man. I don't know. She has to sing every two weeks. I'd have content every day, sometimes five times a day. What about my life? <laughs> then, no, then it becomes your life. You could quit. You could retire. Ah, yes, the words retirement fell right out of Trisha's mouth and into Moses's ear. He was ecstatic. And then we were introduced to face number three. Because remember, there's no such thing as two faces in the world of Trisha and Moses. There's multiple faces. So face three was the opportunistic smile. Moses did start appearing on Trisha's OF and their relationship blossomed from there. On August 11th, Trisha had posted a video with Moses again titled telling him I've slept with over 100 guys plus his reaction over dinner. In this video, Moses had made it clear that she wasn't the one for him in a super sly, snaky way. Oh, you don't want to be around me? Does Moses say Trisha's wifey material? Yeah, for the right person. Yeah. LOL. Like, wait. Uh, like this, okay, and this is the thing. These TV channels, they, oh my god, they try to hyper-analyze so much shit. <laughs> So I'm not sure whether Moses was just joking or whether he genuinely felt this way. It's hard to tell because he doesn't show much emotion online. Also, also, what, what is that? Is that mac and cheese? Is that egg salad? What the fuck is that? But it's interesting to note that exactly one month later, Trisha had posted the boyfriend tag to her channel with Moses, announcing that he was officially her boyfriend. I like you like me. No, I don't want to pretend. <laughs> You're so mean. Oh my God, it's so mean. I mean, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to realise he wasn't joking there. He really has been trying to pretend from the start he likes Trish and stands... I mean, no, that sounds... That sounds like playful banter. I know that might come as a shock to you, because maybe not many guys want to flirt with you, but, like, sometimes couples have, like, playful banter to insult each other, but they don't really mean it. You know, it's like when the homies, you know, insult each other. It's fake, it's fake insults. It's all like, no, 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 he really loves her. But just their body language and the way Trisha used to interact with Jason, who she truly loved. In oh, relation to guy, guys, we have an expert at body language here. Repeat, expert at body language on the scene. 
how her and Moses act towards each other. I mean, they definitely like each other and they put up with each other, but if Trish was broke, I highly doubt Moses would give her a second glance. Like, it's just so obvious he's really not that into her. Or, you know, it could be just a different type of relationship. I just don't feel it, though. They just don't mesh well together. You need to lean in more. Can you lean in more? <laughs> Do you see how far back okay. I am? Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's cute. Aw, that's cute. Oh, look at oh, your okay. smile, your natural smile. Looking at him going all red hair and her trying to say, like, give a natural smile. And then he just gives that awkward pretend smile, like, ugh, That's the not an awkward so pretend real. smile. It's so awkward to watch. The secondhand embarrassment is... Like... I, again, I can't, I can't believe I have to repeat myself, but she's repeating herself a lot in this, in this, like, quote-unquote video essay. People react differently on camera. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. In full force. So Moses featured in a lot of mukbang videos on Trisha's channel around this time, pre-cancellation. This was in September of 2020. Trisha had posted a video called I'm Triggered AF over this. And in this video, she was Trigger. making fun of Moses' water obsession. So Moses believes he's water, by the way. Basically, he has this godlike tendency. He thinks he's God. He's very obsessed with himself, but that's just a whole nother video entirely. Basically, at this stage in their life, Moses was very into to his water, posting it all the time on his water channel, and Trisha was taking the piss out of this. With his water channel? Is that what they're saying? Water? Am I hearing that right? They fucking... His water channel? I, I can't fucking understand this lady's accent. And you could see that he genuinely wasn't happy with her being patronising about it. People were pointing this out in the comments. Someone even said, They did a study on aspects of relationships that make it more likely to fail. Rolling eyes, making snide remarks, etc. were at the top of the list. You may be joking, Trisha, but you have to be respectful about Moses' water comments. He doesn't literally mean water. It's an analogy, a philosophy that he really believes in. Just be a little more gentle about the water thing. He's into it. Just be gentle. Oh my god, they actually mean water. Water. I I'm I'm admittedly a bit confused, but okay. Okay. Learn to be more like water. Go with the flow when he brings the stuff up. Try to understand it as something abstract, not literal. If it bothers you, have a small serious talk about it maybe. Not always bring it up all the time. Anyone would be annoyed if someone constantly brings up their life philosophy. You need to balance this issue. Don't disrespect him and cause resentment or distance between you two. Get it. Also some advice. Cool it with the Jewish stuff. Does this mean most- Cool it with the Jewish stuff. Start with the Jewish stuff. Moses could have slightly resented Trisha from the start. I truly think he did. And I think he went into this relationship with dark intentions because as we Oy saw vey. in those leaked messages, which I'm going to bring up right now, he was messaging his ex and telling her how he planned on using Trisha, getting her pregnant, etc., and claiming that child support money. Seven months prior to when Trisha and Moses were officially a thing, he was messaging his ex all these derogatory things about Trisha and what he was planning to do to her. And in my opinion, it just shows that uh -huh. he didn't have good intentions for from the beginning and i think that's why uh, he put up with so much of his shit like he was probably thinking i don't know i don't care i'm just gonna secure the bag now these messages didn't leak until September you see you see if moses if moses was a chick doing this if moses was a fucking chick doing this if he had an only fans he fucking get away with this 100 percent uh, drama investigator would be like, "Yas, queen, get the fucking bag." That's what that's what drama investigator would do. She would be like, "Yas, queen." 2021. So the messages from February 2020, Daphne had said, Oh, I miss them. I'd love to see you again soon if you've got any free time. Spring break, maybe? Let's see what happens. I might be married to Trisha by then. Oh God, if you Vegas marry her before me, I'll be devastated. I'll just give her a baby and collect child support. Exactly two years later, give or take, he's married to Trisha and they're having a baby. So we need to discuss the Frenemies episode. That oh Moses my speech. God, the connections. The connections are all there. We need to do major investigation against this. In February of 2021, they were already engaged at this point, which is important to remember. They were doing uh -huh. like a quiz-like episode where they were discussing their partners. One of the questions that Trisha and Ethan were asked were, what were their favourite things about themselves? Trisha said that she loved how she had money. And I just find it very interesting what Moses found most appealing about Trisha. <laughs> okay, so we'll start with you two. So go ahead and reveal your answers. Oh, wait, who's showing? No. 
What? Ela said. Oh, hey. show your answer. Show your answer. I said funny because I thought that was uh, like. You say money? No, funny. I no, said money. money. Uh, and Moses, let's not forget, said talented, which is a little bit <laughs> like, okay, Moses. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely not. Yeah, I do all the time. I'm I don't, not it's not that I don't think you're talented, but it's not. like, that's like. That's Moses being nice. That's just, that's just being nice to his girlfriend. Oh, dog. Very broad, uh, general. We're going to be rich if she wasn't talented. Oh, thanks. Now, he always uses this term to describe Trisha, that she's very talented. And I think he. I mean. We kind of dog on her, but like, even like Kim Kardashian to a certain extent has to have some level of talent in order to remain as relevant as they have for 10 plus years. Granted, it's not super talent or anything like that, but to some degree, Trisha had to have had talent to get to where she is today. Not saying it's good, great talent, but Moses is not technically wrong here. He uses this word as a way to make Trisha feel good about herself, but we all know that Trisha is not talented. The only thing that she's we all know she's not talented. That this is, is a this is a st this is a fact. This is one hundred percent fact. <laughs> a troll like she even knows that herself that she has zero talent but like it's just so interesting how that's the word moses uses to yeah like i said it's, it's almost like he's trying to be nice to his girlfriend I, again and drama investigator i'm sure you're not used to men like trying to give you compliments or oh women i don't know what your sexual preferences are but from the sound of it, it sounds like you're not used to your partner just giving you compliments, just just to improve your mood. <laughs> Let's Describe continue. Her. And then the fact he said that's how she has so much money is because she's so talented. There's not much depth to the things that he actually loves about her. It's always kind of just revolved around money. This just reinforces those leaked texts about how he was planning to get her pregnant for that child support money. The water. He told me that too. You think it's real? I, I, he seems to have a proprietary technique. I, I've never seen it. Yes, I'm the only one. Anywhere else. He's, he's or, I mean, I, I don't think he invented the concept of photographing water, but I, I've never seen No, he did. That's like what that. he said. No, no, I did. He's I the did. only one that's oh, done Oh, you're it. the... Oh, well, well, I mean, I'm not a historian. What do I know? <laughs> I'll take him at his word. Anyways, I'll take right. him at his word. I've too. never seen photographs like the one he takes, but I don't... I don't... This was... Frenemies was the show, by the way, that, like, eclipsed the original h 3 h 3 podcast and this is the type of content that they have keep that in mind that's a big claim to say you invented <laughs> yeah it's a big water. invention too okay are you um do you have a patent shark tank <laughs> shark tank yeah. do you have a patent on it was it was on wired magazine i mean i'm the only person doing this are you patented i, I am i am the only person doing this i am 100 percent original it is 100 percent backed by science because i did the science for it therefore it is 100 percent fact um no because when you patent oh. it's just a matter of putting the money into it but okay. no <laughs> mm, not uh, someone's coming for the brand after this <laughs> oh no I love him. Oh, he no. He doesn't with me because I don't know. It doesn't make any sense. I'm like, okay. But I'm proud of you. I am proud of you. Just don't <laughs> <laughs> I'm proud of you. Like, I'm proud of a dog. Next year, claiming he's the only person in the world who invented taking pics of water. Even Ethan was like, um, what the heck? Get off your high horse. That's not true at all. Moses was all like, yes, I am. With a big grin on his face. Just so much confidence. So much to prove. Okay. Maybe, maybe that was a shit in green. So fucking what? So what, drama investigator? To Ethan. And Ethan was like, not even bothered. He's like, whatever, okay. You can be number one king of water in the world. I don't care. This is the thing. Moses has always <laughs> been jealous of Ethan. He's had this deep hatred for him for deep years. Hatred. And how do we know this? All thanks deep to Moses' ex-girlfriend Daphne, who actually sent a T-page voice memos about just how much Moses was jealous of Ethan. It was sickening what she'd exposed. Um, that... Ethan's parents were using him for money because the parents are really broke, that they used to live in Mexico because they were trying to avoid paying taxes, and that they had a house in Mexico, whatever, and then they moved back to America because Ethan's parents bought them a house. Oh no, the um, juicy drama. 
So yeah, juicy. I honestly don't remember like anything else, but he 100% was talking shit about them. He always fucking hated them, whatever. So Ooh, what spicy. have we learned today thus far? These hidden messages throughout all of Trisha and Moses. And this is why Moses is the most evil person on earth. Thank you for my video essay. Like, okay, dog, you, you did your shitty video. Oh, but like, not gonna lie. I am slightly excited for part two because I want to see more reaching from this person. I want to see more and more reaching. It, it, it will be fan fucking tastic. It, it, it's going to be wonderful. 100%. Now, is there any other petty dr fucking drama going on today? Is there any other petty fucking drama let me tell you boys let me tell you i just hung out with my uh grandparents today you know what it was great it was great it was fun 100 percent, 10 out of 10 we'll do it again by the way oh my god the new lego star wars game came out the new lego star wars game came out and this i haven't played it yet but this wave of nostalgia flood over flew over me because a friend of mine was playing it and like it just brought because i i played the games on my ps2 my original ps2 and i remember the first lego star wars game specifically because it was a blue disc and i think the blue disc they would degrade faster than the regular disc I just remember, like, my PC, like, not the PC, my PS2 had a hard time reading that blue disc, and it just got destroyed, demolished, and then eventually got the, the, complete, com the uh, complete saga on the Wii, had a whole blast with that. But yeah, we're getting to just about an hour on the copious after hours, the, the after copious show, guys. If you have anything, it doesn't matter how fucking petty it is. You want to talk about it, let's fucking talk about it. Because we all know we love talking shit. We're, we are, we're all in the drama sphere to a certain extent. We, we probably love our reality TV shows. We probably just love seeing people flung shit at each other. So if you want to talk shit about people, just come on and talk fucking shit. Anyway, guys, if that is all you have to say, this is Nerdy John signing out, but let me get the music that's going to finish us off tonight. You know what? Um, Dead on Dave has real talk, and you know what? Real talk, really good, really good. I... Unfortunately, I never had the pleasure of knowing the guy. You know, um, by the time I... Um, I got into shot from the point and all that man was already retired of sorts already doing his own thing but I got the perfect song to end this out off on uh, give me one moment as I get it together and I just want to say thank you guys uh, by the way for supporting the new show uh, don't worry we're we're gonna be getting a f gonna be getting a thumbnail a proper thumbnail for this exclusive series uh make sure of course to always check out the dead on dave channel because motherfucker makes great fucking content he gets guests like fucking tommy c on there he's by the way he's an off and on again co-host he's one of the ogs for shot from the point Dude has a hilarious show with Willie Mac, does streams with Jeff, who is another, who is a, who is another host for Shot from the Point. Man does Fall Guys streams on Twitch, so you better fucking check the man out. He is the copious king, and I'm your host, Nerdy John, signing out. Have a lovely day, you motherfuckers.
I'm joining I'm joining the server in a minute. I got my PC working again. Well, that's good. That's good. You better fucking join soon, buddy. We can't be waiting around for if you want to call in. Are you going to call in or are you just going to join the server? That's very important to know. Are you going to call in? Are you going to call in or are you just joining the server? Later, nerdy. Later, be hearted. But yeah, um, if you didn't get the chance to call in on today's show, there is always a next show. Because we're going to make the After Copia show a thing, folks. It's going to be an awesome show run by yours truly. We're going to get co-hosts in some time. And hey, whatever, like I said, you know how they do it on the Shot from the Point server? We're going to be doing that shit too. We're going to get all the petty fucking shit on here. We're going to broadcast it to you live and we're just going to enjoy it.